Michael McCall, Republican congressman from the great state of Texas, House Foreign Affairs Committee chairman and Homeland Security Committee member. Welcome, Congressman. Great to have you here. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. So impeachment inquiry, are you on board with that? And can you explain to folks at home what this means precisely? It means that we're going to ramp up our investigation into this. I think, uh, you know, all of a sudden the, the plot is thickening right now. Uh, tens of millions of dollars going into shell corporations in the United States from foreign governments. That's where my committee comes into play, where certain foreign policy decisions made on because of this money coming in. Mm -hmm. I was a prosecutor in the Johnny Chen case in the 90s the Clinton uh, campaign, where all this money from China was coming in to influence the Clinton uh, election, uh, presidential election. This is nothing new for China. It's nothing new for foreign governments. Uh, Burisma is serious. And when you have the special prosecutor who the vice president at that time called for his firing and, and threatened to withhold federal assistance that I sign off on uh, in exchange for him, him being fired, that alone is serious. But when all this money is coming in, from Burisma to the Hunter Biden family uh, and the big man being the president of the United States. I think this is very serious. And then you get the China aspect to this and the Russian aspect. Uh, this this is getting very serious. If the speaker and your House leadership team signs off on this impeachment inquiry, what further powers does it give you in the House to follow the money trail? Well, I think we already have many of those powers, but I think our subpoenas have to be taken seriously. We can't be stonewalled like I've been with the State Department and I've tried to get documents on the on the uh, Afghanistan investigation. But this uh, getting into foreign governments, you know, a lot of these are energy companies, by the way. Mm -hmm. Burisma, you know, was a Russian influenced energy company in Ukraine. Uh, you know, the Chinese uh, company, energy company. And, the, you know, the, the lady, the gal that was married to the mayor of Moscow, was exempted from the Russian sanctions. Mm -hmm. She gave $3.5 million to Hunter Biden uh, and his associates, and yet she's exempted from the Russian sanctions. By the way, she owned a lot of shares of Gazprom, which is Nord Stream. I want to know whether the decision to lift the sanctions on Nord Stream may have been a result of some of this money coming in. Saturday marked two years since a terrorist attack killed 13 American service members in Afghanistan, many still outraged and Looking for accountability for the Biden administration's botched exit from the country, President Biden issuing a statement, an excerpt reading, quote, we will forever honor the memory of the 13 service members who were stolen far too soon. Critics not having it, many saying too little, too late. Uh, no, re no sympathy, no real recognition of what those families are dealing with uh, two years later. In some cases, uh, personal items not yet being returned and certainly no apology from the president. You're doing a roundtable with these Gold Star families tomorrow. Set the table for us. We'll be all the parents of the uh, children whose lives were lost, service men and women who were essentially blown up due to the suicide bomber. Very sad. And when I talk to them, they want answers. They want accountability. They want to know what happened to their, their child. Uh, they're very angry. And they're angry at the administration about the way they've been treated. So we want to hear from them about their stories. But I also want to tell them what our investigation has uncovered. For instance, we'll have the sniper. You have the suicide bomber in his sights, mm -hmm. but was not given permission to engage the suicide bomber. This is what's very hard on the families is the fact that it could have been prevented but it wasn't stopped. And then we have greater intelligence that the IC had warned about ISIS-K plotting this in a hotel room, asked for permission for an airstrike. That airstrike was denied. Um, we want to get to the bottom, and these families deserve answers, and we'll be with them uh, tomorrow, and I know you're covering that story as well. Earlier this month, you had an opportunity to hear from some of these families. I know it's not your first time working with them. Let's take a sample of it. Confusion, deceit, lost, angry, sad, heartbroken, and disgusted. Biden, the Biden administration, Blinken, Milley, Austin, whited, ball, incompetent, cowards, evil. I want accountability. Why would they just not say, oh, we, we made a mistake? Be a grown-ass man. Admit to your mistakes. Learn from them so that this doesn't happen ever, ever again. You can hear the heartbreak from those Gold Star parents, a combination of heartbreak and anger. You're right, and we'll hear that uh, tomorrow as, as well. 
Uh, but we need to we need action. They deserve answers. This administration has tried to sweep this whole thing under the rug. They've shown no accountability. And I think that's why you see the anger that you're seeing. This will mark the two year anniversary of the Abbey Gate bombing. Uh, so it's a very emotional time. They want answers from this administration. They were not treated properly mm. as victims of this crime, if you will. And the way it was conducted, Mike, it, you know, you could agree or disagree whether we should have pulled out. But the way it was done with no plan, there was no plan. And if you if you plan to fail, you, you fail the plan. And, and I, I think the whole thing is uh, really a, a tragic surrender to the Taliban and a turning point in our foreign policy. That's when you saw Putin looking mm -hmm. at Ukraine. You saw Chairman Xi looking at Taiwan and the Pacific. This is the beginning of the end of the failure of the Biden administration's foreign policy. Chairman Michael McCall of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, grateful for your time today, sir. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thank you. The migrant crisis.